Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, uh, old business, I really don't have much of anything uh, unless anyone else has something they want to bring up. Um, just uh, in September, we have a show down at um, Beans and Brushes. So get your photos ready. I believe Sam is also going to be having a show that you may all think about entering. I think the deadline is September the 1st, if I'm not mistaken. I noticed in the, uh, not the newsletter, it was in the um, the Sunday update. There's a bunch of, right. a bunch of contests there at the bottom of that. And... Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones that was in there is the butterfly or whatever it is, the, the one that um, Annie and I judge. I uh, can't remember the Pollinate. name. Yeah, Pollinate. oh, pollinators. That's it. Oh, pollinators. Yeah. So don't forget that one because uh, we had a really good showing the first year uh, that me that Annie and I went and judged that. And you guys uh, won several. I think I think it's, I think it's actually we won first and second place or something like that. Uh, but last year was I don't think as good. So go ahead and uh, don't don't forget about that one. Get out there and get some pictures yeah. of pollinators. I'm not sure whether I'm going to enter that one or not because I am with the, the garden club who is helping sponsor that. But, but you are allowed to enter it. And the only uh, me and Annie are not because we judge it. But please enter. Right. It. Yeah, even if you are a member of the garden club, you are allowed to enter it. So go ahead and. Go ahead and enter that one. We'd like to see. I'd like to see some a good a good showing of the WPS there. And it's I'd like to see some butterflies. It's it's yeah. I seen two in my yard the other day. I was excited. Um, it's funny to to uh, to judge that show. Uh, Annie and I have done it uh, three. I think this this will be the third year for us to do it. Um, but it's funny to judge it because as we're going through of that even though it's anonymous when we're judging it, you can't see names or anything like that. We can almost always pick out WPS members pictures, not because we've seen them, but because we know your guys' style, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so um, not that, not that we only pick that out for winning. I, I'll, I'll put it that way because we, we are, uh, there's uh, four of us to go through and judge it. So it's me and Annie and two other people. So. Anyhow, um, back to where we're, oh, where's, where's old business. Uh, so the show at uh, Beans and Brushes, a SAMA show, there's some other shows that are listed on that Sunday update. There's some stuff in a newsletter too, I believe. Yes. So, uh, yeah. If you guys are. 24th is the deadline for the Literal Arts Senate jury show. LAC, uh, the 24th of this month? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Rogers show, I think it is. Mm -hmm. If some photographers could go and take some photos, that would be greatly appreciated because um, we are doing photos of Latrobe and stuff so we can have the Latrobe for free. So just throwing that out there. Do you want photos of the actual art show too? Oh, you want you want People photos of the, like the opening like the events, yeah, like okay. all the events and stuff that's going on. All right. So the receptionist would probably be good reception. Right, right. Yes, that might be good. Um, like the like when they do their night dinner thing. Right. I think the ice cream thing's already over, but. No, I don't think so. I think the ice I don't cream know. Is, I can't keep track of yeah, it. Yeah, I want to say it's in the fall, isn't it? Or am I wrong? So, I don't. Know. So I basically, basically anything that's going on in on on in La Trobe, if you cover it, though, they would like to have some pictures of it. Yes, yeah, just you. stuff that they put on. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else from anybody? For old business i really didn't have much of anything i looked through i couldn't find anything to bring up it's not old business but crescent sanatorium for the entire month of july it's 45 dollars for the entire day to go visit so beth and i were chatting um 
we're thinking about going out July 22nd. It's a Sunday. I've got another friend who's interested, but just want to throw it out there. If we want to get together and go for 45 bucks, you get the entire day and not just three hours. So it's kind of a good deal hmm. and hopefully nicer weather. <laughs> July 20. Well, it won't be freezing. That's a Saturday. Yeah. It should be a Sunday, whatever that Sunday is. 23rd? 23rd? Yeah, the 23rd okay. is Sunday. So the 23rd, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anybody's interested? Maybe getting together to go. I'm gonna say that I'm in. Okay. Because unless you... my unless I get voluntold that I'm doing something else. I'm in, and I'll bring my Galadriel cloak thing in case we want to do some long ghosty things. Oh yeah! <laughs> All right, I might be able to. I might be able to work that one in too on the twenty third. I don't think I have anything yet on that date. Cool. Question. Mm -hmm. Answer. Does anybody know Joseph Teplitz? T e p l i z. Lives in Ligonier as a professional photographer. Mm -mm. Who was? Who is he? Joe Teplitz, T E P L I Z. No, the only one I know is Tim, Tiffany, and I can't remember her last name. Who considers herself a professional photographer, and she even put a book out. Is she in Teplitz? Uh, huh? Is she one of the Teplitz? Or are you talking about Luke? She lives in Lake Trobe only. Lake no, Ligonier. Okay. Yeah. Don't know her. Yeah, I'm a nice girl, but her photography is, well, anyway, you'll have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, be, be careful. Remember, we post these. Videos. Yeah. Okay. She um, takes a lot of them of the... Uh, a lot of them of uh, the pups when Angel has a deal going on. Yeah. And she's caught a lot of good ones with the pups. Um, she's, uh, everybody has their specialty, I would say. And so just look around. Well, what was the, was there a purpose behind the question? Yeah, I ran across him on Nikonians, and he lives in Ligonier. He says he's a pro. He took some shots of Ramon's, um, the classic event. He hasn't posted on Nikonians at the moment, and I just happened to notice he was from Ligonier, and oh. I'm going to give him a shot, see if he's interested. Yeah, I do. Okay. That worked, Carl. Yeah. Oh. What was the lady's name you mentioned? Uh, Tiffany, and I can't remember her last name, but yeah, That's check with her and see, because like I said, uh, people in town do know uh, her works. I can always send you her site also. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, please do so. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, and, I'll do so I'm going to call and see if we can get Like I said, her specialty is like animals, uh, dogs, and et cetera, I think. Although she did put out a book with some, and I, I'm trying to think of what was in her book, but it was last year or the year before last, she put out a book with some of her photos in there, but it wasn't with the dogs. It was of other landscape or whatever. I don't remember. Um, okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Uh, so under new business, I have uh, really not a whole lot. I had shows underneath there, but Marty covered that. Um, just as a reminder of what's coming up, uh, August uh, meeting place we have to come up with, Marty, I believe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we're not going to, We're the August meeting will not be a Zoom meeting. We're going to meet in person uh, was the plan on that. Yes, and it's on um, cell phones, right? And it's it is cell phone, so something about cell phone photography. So yeah, let me look uh, it up. Hold on, <laughs> it's right here. Um, yes, I think we are doing cell phones. Does that mean going outside 
taking pictures or is yes. that all right yes we're we're not meeting uh our august wps meeting will not be on zoom it will be in person ah, with cell phones yes. so yes. Uh, the 14th at marty's place yes we could do it at marty's place we could do it or at marty's we have not decided no, it's not decided. I just wanted to bring it up and make sure okay. that we were. I mean, we, we were can do it there. Where it was going to be. Because, like, the parks and stuff, you have to be out by dusk. So, um, yeah, we can do that and we can do some shopping. We can let all your rabbits loose. I could bring baby bunnies. <laughs> I have lots of baby bunnies. <laughs> um. You could get motion pictures with people. Um, wow. Yeah, so. We could meet at like a downtown place so that there's. We could, yes. Stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. Make it yet. Yeah, it's, I, like I said, I just wanted to bring it up because I, I noticed that it was not a, not a Zoom meeting. So I wanted to make sure everyone was starting to pay attention to that and getting ready for that one. Um, August 6th, we have a picnic scheduled at Mingo Park. So that's coming up not too long from now. Where uh, is Mingo Park? Um, Washington. It is in Washington. Towards Washington. Okay. Okay. A little bit of a track. Uh, it's actually quite a nice park. And Washington. and Margie is not uh, not Washington D.C. <laughs> is that August sixth? <laughs> that yeah. is August sixth. Oh, you understand that. <laughs> Um, Caitlin's in Italy anyway, so I wouldn't have. Oh, okay. Today. August thirteenth uh, is the uh, photo walk for the, the next photo walk that we have scheduled, and that's going to be at the National Pike uh, Steam and Gas Show. Uh, so that one's coming up, and that was what I had for reminders. Uh, last reminder on dues. Um, within the next week or so, I'm going to go through the email list. If you haven't paid dues, I'm taking. I'm taking the people out of the email list. I'm not going to keep sending everything out to people that aren't paying or due. So uh, we got, what did I see today? I, 174 people I think we're sending emails to. So we're going to go through and get get rid of that. I'm going to spend some time and go through that and get it narrowed down to the people that are actually paying dues for the, for the group. There's no use us keep sending them everything. Jeez. Okay. Um, Brian, this is for you. Um, okay. Annie just texted me and said, what do you want her to do with your photos? I forgot she had my photos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell her to sell them and give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Whenever I, I don't know when we're going to see each other. Whenever I, next time I see her or I can come down and pick them up. Just tell her to let, get a hold of me. All right. I completely forgot she had them. So he forgot. <laughs> so, and let's go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. The other thing that I have on here, and this is something that the uh, the we discussed at a um officers meeting a while back uh or actually at the planning meeting we talked about possibly doing a wps photo calendar mm. i want to know if there's any interest in that sure, sure. yeah okay so i think uh i think the best way to go about this would be to i'll put a uh a flare on the reddit site you guys can post your pictures, any pictures that you think, you know, within reason. I don't want you to post 100 pictures because it's a, it's a calendar. There's only 12. Uh, but if you're interested in participating in it, post some pictures on underneath that uh, flare. And um, well, the pictures don't have to be taken, you know, this month. You can, it can be anything that you've taken in the past, whatever. Put something up in there. And then maybe after... Uh, the august meeting you'll have till the august meeting to post them after the august meeting i'll close as far as putting stuff on it we'll vote on the pictures the top 12 pictures that gets votes are the ones that will go on the calendar 
Um, and then we'll put together a little calendar. I'm not looking to print like 10,000 calendars or anything like that, but we'll put together a little calendar we can get printed through somewhere. We've looked at a couple different things, but I'm, I'm sure there's some places out there that can print eight or 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever. Uh, but just to give it a try. And if that works out and everyone likes it, we'll, we'll do it next year and maybe try to put some out for sale. What may I make a suggestion? Um, yeah. I do have a place that I had calendars made and you only need one, but having to say that, um, the, why don't we limit it? So somebody don't come up and put in 12 and this person puts in eight and we'll be forever trying to vote. Why don't we limit it to three pictures? Okay. And, and also tell them to include something for like a winter picture, if they have it, Christmas picture, a fall picture, so that we're not stuck with just all one type of picture. We have some with the seasons. Uh, just for the season. that, that was the word I wrote down next to it, seasons. So three photos. And if you can, try to do something for different seasons so that we don't have 12 uh, summer photos. All, yeah. So if you got something with some winter stuff on it, something. Rex, uh, you're muted. Rex, you're muted. I got it. No, I was going to say, why don't you make it four? You know, then there's one of each season that you might have. That works for me. Yeah, just one more, just th four. And then whatever one sense. is. Okay. Well, we may have something with like a street photography or something. It doesn't necessarily. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. Have to yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you to pick whatever four photos that you want. But right. I, if you if you got something that makes sense for winter time and something that makes sense, you know, for a January yeah. year. Put that in there if you got something. If not, that's fine. We'll pick the we'll pick twelve pictures. It don't matter. Um, but you got four. You can put four in. Yeah. One one more thing. Mm -hmm. Um, determine if it's a vertical calendar or a horizontal. So a horizontal. Horizontal. Okay. Yep. Well, maybe I missed that. Okay. I didn't say that, but it it will it will be horizontal. Good. Uh, <laughs> but you good can question. Put vertical right. pictures in a horizontal calendar. <laughs> yeah i yeah you can put vertical pictures in there. there's no reason why you can't so. you do a gang them two up you know, you can get and, and that's a possibility too because that'd give us a chance to put more than 12 pictures in, in the calendar but we'll see what gets submitted yeah let's see what let's see what shows up put four pictures in i'll put the zoom i'll put the uh um the flare up on the site either tonight or tomorrow evening um so that it'll be on there and you guys can start in a, in a deadline in a deadline yeah, I was gonna the say. deadline's the next meeting i already said that oh i missed it sorry that's okay i was corralling <laughs> dogs out of my bunnies do you want all color don't matter all right you know where they're taken yeah i mean once we get to once we get the judging done then we'll uh if we have to if you can put it in a comment where it was taken or what it is or no no no, no. it's the where you where it came from restricted no 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 any anything that okay. you want okay yeah i don't i don't want to make this too difficult i want to i'm trying no, to make no, no, it as no, easy no. as can put it give give us four photos let's see what happens yeah <laughs> And we'll go from there. I, this is a, a first adventure for us, but it's something that we've talked about a couple of times and we never got around to doing it. And I said, let's just try it and see how it works out. All right. That was all I had for business. Any questions? Anybody, anybody else have anything that they want to bring up? Did anybody win at the Westmoreland Nat Nationals? Mm -mm. Didn't sell anything either. Did anybody sell anything? Um, Actually, somebody did the top photography one was somebody from WPS. And now I can't, I'm, let me see if I can still pull those up. Cause I took a picture, I took a bunch of pictures when I was at the show at Twin Lakes and then haven't done anything with them. Where is it? Jim Meehan, I think. Yes. Jim Meehan oh, got the yeah, photography award. It's right. fall at Riverside Park. It's one of his drone shots. And according to um, Sarah Hunter, I think it was two things, not just photos, but two things sold 
from the college show and four things sold mm -hmm. at Twin Lakes. But I don't know what. <laughs> I know not mine, but I don't know what. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> well, cool. So um, if anybody talks to Jim, let's see if we uh, he can get him get him to give us that picture so we can put it in the newsletter. Yeah. I can shoot Marty a picture of my picture of it hanging on the wall. She's giving you oh, a thumbs that'll, up. Thinking. That'll work until he doesn't send me until if he can send me one. Or okay. You Use got that. that. A, it might that be on Reddit. <laughs> I've had a migraine all day, so you understand. <laughs> His shot might be on Reddit too. Okay. How look. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Uh Margie, I think you have the program tonight, don't you? Marty? No, Margie. Marty. 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 <laughs> I heard Marty. <laughs> yeah, I do. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm about as ready as I'm going to be. Good enough. I'm going to start with, um, before I share a screen, let y'all know it's going to be on props. We do a lot of props, use a lot of props for indoor photography but we don't use very many for outdoor photography. Now, as y'all know, I haven't been able to get out and take any pictures. I have some of these in my picture, most of them. Well, a lot of them are pictures I took off of the internet. And um, I'm going to start with, uh, oh, yeah, sharing the screen. Let me see here. All right, I'm going to have a video over here where it says start video. Do I need to unlock that for the noise, for the sound or whatever? What happened to Brian? He Hold on, I, I, I muted myself, sorry. Uh, when you go to share the screen, there's two two check marks on the bottom. It says uh, one is uh, about the audio and the other one's about optimization or something. Click both of those and then share your screen. All right. All right, we see your screen now. <laughs> That's not what I want. It's it's an it's a nice yeah. screen. It's well organized. It's way, <laughs> way more organized than mine. <laughs> uh, okay. Nobody has ever looked like that. I have stuff on top of stuff. I can't even figure out which way to move <laughs> things to find it. Okay, we're gonna start off with a video here. So I am hoping this is gonna work. Uh, Nikki has an unusual passion, and he uses it to bring joy to others. It's squirrel photography. Very important for me to, to see, to, to bring another, another image in life, you know, something bright, brightful, happiness, joy. It's very important for me to a funny youth and, and smart. Photography became a source of joy and happiness for him after overcoming so much. As a young child, Nikki escaped the Rwandan genocide. Growing up in, in Belgium was uh, very hard for me as a child. I was four years old when I fled from the, the genocide in Rwanda. Growing up was uh, very tough because I didn't know or I didn't understand the language. I, I had my sister with me. She was nine years old. I could connect with her. And, of my own family and uh, she helped me uh, adapt to Belgium to life after observing how interesting you all see this you are screen sharing and all that stuff mm -hmm. on my screen do, do you see it yeah yeah yes how do I get rid of that you don't <laughs> you can move it but that's about it well, I did I'm not it. seeing it actually Margie, that, that big bar that you have, we don't see. 
All there right. Is, All right. That's what I need. Yeah, the big long know. bar is always in your way, but it's not in our way. We don't see it. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Squirrels can be up close. Nikki started learning photography. I was walking around and suddenly I I heard a strange noise came from the bushes and I stand uh, still and suddenly just the squirrel came, came in front of my feet, I think one meter or so and it, it did not run away and I was I was uh, very surprised to see that I had, I had never encountered a squirrel at, at such a close range. It was very special. I, I saved up to buy the camera and uh, yeah, it was a real process to learn everything. I, I had I've, I learned everything from trial and error and made made a lot of mistakes, and uh, that's how I learned uh, photography. He realized squirrels may not be all that different from us. You can see how intelligent they are in the pictures and how they every every time they how they find their food and uh, it's very for me it's very original to yeah, create ideas like that and then see that. I have in mind that it can happen like that, and that's very funny. His photography soon became a way to make others feel the same joy he did while observing his furry friends. I hope it, it brings them joy uh, and that they can see life brighter because there are you know, terrible things uh, happening, and I'm just happy that I can provide pictures like that and that they can forget the problems that they're that we have in the, in the world right now. Nikki is always thinking of new ideas to help bring these squirrels to life and make people smile along the way. For me, it's, it's a joy to make these pictures and uh, people are happy to see them. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm very blessed. I love the way he uses props. Everybody has squirrels. Everyone has ra probably rabbits and etc. And the way he uses his props, enticing the squirrels with walnuts and peanuts to get that shot. The key to it is props. And I thought it was a great way to show you to use props on that. Hold on, let me... This is just, you guys can talk if you want. Jeez. Did y'all hear that pretty good? Yes. Yeah, I could hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'm gonna get in here and I'm just gonna show you different props that might give you an idea when you go out to landscaping or go outside to take a picture you can use we're going to start with the book props now a book is something that you can absolutely put into your backpack you can get some little books uh little three by four books and use them outside so this is a great way just hold up a book another one set it down um, and take a picture of it. We all have, especially in the fall time, and we have a lot of mountains and et cetera around here. Take a paperback book, throw it on the ground, take a picture of it. One at the beach. Here's another one. And I was thinking what how wonderful that would look if we took it early in the morning when we have the fall coming up and it's a background of the autumn colors. We all, you know, go downtown. There's a lot of ledges downtown. Take a book or two. Take some pictures. You can still see the background, but you have the subject up front, which is a book. As you can see, another one, picnic table. Throw a book on there. Instead of just having, if you imagine this here without some kind of subject in front of it, some kind of item in front, it's just mountains yes it's pretty landscape but having another object there i think elevates the picture 
this is something I would do because I do a lot of uh, stomach shots. Taking some kind of tablecloth or bedspread or whatever, you know, a piece of cloth. Lay down out there and open your book and take some pictures. It tells a story. All right. There are some people who say they do not have enough room to take any props with them. All right. You got shoes on. Take shoes, pictures of your shoe. This is a great one. Take your shoes off. Put them up against something. This is probably one of my favorite shoe pictures here. Uh, up in the mountains, he's standing on a, a rock. But it's really nice. This is a nice picture. This is one of my favorites. Of course, we all sit up there, have our feet up there on a bench or a ledge or a rock ledge, take pictures of that. And it just elevates it a little bit because otherwise it would be without the feet, I guess you could say the shoes, it's not as elevated. But adding that just seems to bring it up one more notch. Hit your frame. You don't want to lug a big picture frame around, fine. Picture frames come as small as two by three. Use picture frames. We all have this around the house. And uh, they come in different colors, different sizes. And I thought that was unique. You can imagine a flower coming out of that but it is a nice way of framing, something different. Make, you don't want to take anything, rock, I mean, uh, stems. While you're out there, and believe me, we have plenty of stems around here, make your own picture frame. It can be all kinds of dimensions. Doesn't have to be just square or triangle um, or rectangle. You can make all kinds of dimensions the kind of uh, stems that you find around them. Eyeglasses. A lot of us wear eyeglasses. I like the way you can catch a reflection at a certain time of night. Once again, eyeglass. Throw it down in a bunch of flowers. That became a more interesting picture instead of just all white flowers and green leaves and petals, you've got something else in there to add some interest. This one here is really, really good. All the way around it is out of focus, but when you look through the frames themselves, it is in focus. And I love the way this line here draws up into the building in the back, right up underneath and over the nose piece. I really, really like this one. Interesting. Something different. Here's another one. We're going to do mirrors. Mirrors come in all sizes. Everything from like a compact mirror you can throw into your uh, pocket. This picture is quite interesting because it has several different size mirrors within mirrors within mirrors. Gives you an idea. Pack some mirrors. This is still nice. This is an optical illusion. The perspective is makes it look like an extremely large mirror when it's really just a small one. Same here, you can see the background and the foreground. You could do this with even plants, as well as humans. I think these are some of my favorite because you look down on the ground and this is a driveway and you look down on the ground and you see all of these leaves. Where are they coming from? Look at the mirror. It actually reflects back where they're coming from. 
which in this case is a tree. It tells a story. Same with this one, all of the petals. And they have it situated. Where does it come from? The tree up above. I definitely like these an awful lot. Very creative. Or you can do a minimalistic type. And you can put that mirror over anything that is above you to have a picture within a picture. Of course, this is one that Brian would get. That's probably, uh, what, a two by three, <laughs> two by square. Throw it on your backpack. But no, this here is on the tripod and it reflects the sunset. And if you look at way the sun is uh, lit up a lot of the surrounding area and you can see why it's lit up, that's because it's got a sunset. So it tells a story too. And I really thought that was very creative. Use anything you want. It doesn't matter whether it's a Milky Way bar, a Coke, a beer, any anything. This is very creative. This is an old basketball hoop. But think about a tennis racket. You can have a tennis racket with you and take pictures with uh, the tennis racket used as a frame. This guy here just picked up some yarn on his way wherever, threw it out there and took a picture of it. And really it turned out pretty good, but it's just showing you if you don't have anything, unfortunately, any place you go, you're gonna find some litter. And that is, uh, throw it out there and take a picture of it and then dispose of the litter properly. Chairs. This is what Beth does an awful lot of, your crystal ball. Now this one here, I really do like the simplicity of it. And those that went to talk about, I have the um, alligator clips. Go ahead and use an alligator clip. Go ahead and punch it into the ground. Find a flower, a leaf, whatever and let the alligator clip go ahead and clip it. Then I would take some rocks or some wood and put around there. Very simple. And it takes nothing for your alligator clip to set it up. Food, of course. But if you look at this here, it's really a nice background, but it makes, I think it adds to it when you have a subject in the foreground. Toys, of course, set those toys up. This one here reminds me of Jim's, Steve Weed. If you remember that, he uh, had a nice picture of, I don't know where it was taken at, but it's probably somewhere along the coastline. And um, it was a real nice picture, but he had just a simple seaweed right there, a clump of seaweed right there, which really elevated the picture. Same thing with this stone. Pick up a stone, put it in there, and it just elevates the picture. Uh, this is not a good picture, in my opinion. There's so much wrong with it, it drives me insane. But it shows you how he just picked up two rocks. I do like the way he caught the sunlight coming in. And across there is uh, the light. I do like that. The rest of it, I don't like. My opinion only. But it just shows you. Pick up a rock. A watering can. Balloons. Everybody. I mean, we've got a pocket. Put the balloons in a pocket. This is actually uh, on a, they took the ribbon and tied it on a limb to add some color. Once again, my alligator clip, and I would like to try this. I would probably find a better background to try it on. But if you put an alligator clip and have it clipped to the tip of the uh, balloon, you can have it standing up. You can have it laying on its side. You can have it at an angle. 
and try different color blues, not just primary colors, but you got polka dot color balloons, you've got stripe balloons, you've got all kinds of different um, uh, color and different dimensions of balloons. Some are round, some are like this, you know? Be creative is what I was trying to say. This is one of my favorite. This is a Dennis thing, I'm sure. If uh, he thought about it, he would have done it. This is probably one of my favorite very favorite of all the balloons. I like the triangle in the corner here. And I like the way the sun is coming off to the top uh, right hand side. But look at the balloon. He captured the outline of the balloon with the sun. And I love that. Now, whether or not he had, and there's some stringers coming down. And I'm thinking that he might have had that balloon on a long string because of this right here. And I probably would have got rid of that and uh, just kept that part with the long string instead. But overall, with the uh, moody background, all the texture there, it, it is just such a good photo. Just shows you blow up two balloons and let her go. Leaves. And uh, if you get bored, you just pick up a bunch of leaves. And this really needs to be redone, but it gives you an idea while you're waiting on people. Uh, just different leaves and put them on a table or on the ground and take a picture of them. There's this uh, did, one. Did you take that picture, Margie? I took it with you and Bill Garvin. I was, gonna say, I was there when you took that to picture. Top. <laughs> yes. I yes, you were, one. dear. Yep. Yeah, with you and Bill Garvin. Uh, this is uh, another one. I just saw a bunch of leaves, so I just piled them up and took a picture of the leaves. Another one with leaves. I broke off a branch with some leaves on it. Now, I wasn't going to show this video, and then I thought of Brian. So we are going to show this video. Hello, Steve Ramsden here with DIY Movie Making, and this week I'm going to show you how you can use a model car to make your low-budget film look much more expensive. It's not very long. So this week I thought I'd try another fun experiment that combines miniatures with live action. As usual, I want to demonstrate that if you think you need a lot of money to get some really great shots, you don't. I'm always looking for new ways to do a lot with a little to really add some production value to my film project. And if you want to see lots more fun DIY movie making tips and tricks, then of course hit that subscribe button. So let's say you want to get some shots with an expensive car in your film. You can't afford the real thing, but maybe you can afford a scale model. If so, you can use forced perspective to make it appear full size. To demonstrate this, I'm going to be using this model of a 1964 Aston Martin DB5, which is the famous car used by James Bond, first seen with Sean Connery in Goldfinger. Now this is a totally in-camera method of filmmaking, which requires no tricky editing or compositing at all. But if you fancy a more advanced method, which does require some editing, you can check out my other video on that as well. So for this basic in-camera version, all you need is your model and a camera. When choosing a model car to use, the bigger the better, and a popular size is 1 to 18, as this gives a lot more detail than smaller models. Once you have your model, you need to pick a location with enough space so you can line up a real background behind it and put your model on something low near the camera. This is one of the oldest Hollywood tricks in the book and is known as forced perspective where you simply put something close to the camera to make it appear larger. When lining up your model with your real background, the easiest method is to not show the ground at all, and basically just put the car's tires along the very bottom of the frame. But this can also be a big giveaway that you are looking at a model. So if you want to be a little more advanced, then you could also build a fake section of road 
such as what I did here just by using a wooden board and some scenic scatter from a model shop to look like tarmac or gravel. This way you can raise the camera up a little bit higher and this can help fool the brain that the car isn't a model because otherwise the road would have to be a model too. And guess what? It is. You also want to look for the edge of the real road and try and line this up with your fake road. It can be tricky to get the angles right here, but it will really help disguise the join. You will also want to film in deep focus, meaning you're trying to get the foreground and the background both in focus at the same time. If you're using a phone and you're in bright sunlight, it might do this automatically, but I would suggest doing it manually so that nothing changes, and if so, this means you'll need to change your aperture to the highest F number you can see displayed. And if you want to see lots more tips on filming miniatures to make them look full scale, then I have a dedicated video on just that. Now, assuming you want to appear in the shot next to your car like I did, you also need to try and line yourself up at the right size. This is much easier with two people, one to film and one to appear in the frame. But if you are filming this alone like I did, then you'll probably need a way of monitoring your shot yourself. I did this using an app on my phone called Canon Camera Connect that lets me use my phone as a monitor to see my camera's view as long as I don't walk too far away. This way I could see if I was in the right place and then I could put my phone away while I filmed the shot. I also tried an option where I made it look like I was leaning against the car. Now obviously you can't interact with it much and move in front of it, but you can look like you are standing behind it or even looking in the windows. Again, after some trial and error, if you get the angles right, this will all help. One of the best things about a fully practical in-camera effect like this is that your model and your scene behind will perfectly match. As long as your model isn't sitting under any shade, no matter what the weather is doing on the day, your light on the foreground will be the same as the background. So will the direction of your shadows. This car is still being lit by the sun and from the same angle as what's behind it. And if the car is shiny, it will even have all the correct reflections of its actual surroundings. It's little details like these that make our minds just accept that this car really is in this location. Because, of course, it is. It's just smaller than it looks. So always remember that in-camera practical effects can add a lot of their own free realism without you even realizing it. So if you follow all these steps, you should end up with a fun result like I did here where I got a shot of me supposedly standing next to my shiny, expensive Aston Martin, which was actually less than a foot long. We're going to have you doing that? Ryan? Who, me? I might have done yeah. that before. That might be what? something cool to try if we do, like if we go uptown or something doing cell phones next month, that might be something that we could try. Yeah, and if you uh, take a look there, this here works in the same way. I think you've probably seen stuff like this. This one here is one of my favorite. I love it coming out of a jar. A toy. Yeah, that's a good one. And all she's doing is she's standing in the back. The cabbage. The next thing you can do with all of our rain we've been having is umbrellas. Go out on these raining days and let's bring a colorful umbrella. If you can see how you can just let it light up. This here is a sunset, I'm sure. And the reflection is nice, a nice bright colored umbrella. Just throw it out there. I was thinking about the bog. Y'all go to the bog, take pictures, take an umbrella, throw it upside down where the bog is. That would make a great photo. Here's another one with reflection. And while I'm thinking about it, they have umbrellas that are, oh my goodness, maybe four inches tall. So you can actually buy those umbrellas that are really small and still take pictures like this. 
There was another one on a wet street. And you can add light up underneath these umbrellas, the little fairy lights to make them light up. The um, another thing is take lanterns. You got gas lantern, light it up when it during that blue hour, and with a nice landscape in the back, or add some fairy lights to some of the lanterns, and you will have a really nice picture. This gives you some ideas on props. Now I have one because another video, but it's a longer video. And the reason I'm using this is because a lot of us take pictures of birds and they wanna know how do you take a picture of a bird with props to make it look natural. So that's what I'm gonna do. This will be the last uh, one. <clears throat> My last video, the weather in the UK has changed a little. We've been having heavy rain with grey flat skies. However, the month leading up to this video, weather has been beautiful. Fantastic sunrises, blue skies, so really nice temperatures. In terms of photography, I've been quite fortunate. Because when I'm off work, I go for my daily walk along the river and I'd always take my camera with me. Me and Helen, we would usually leave the house around 5.45am down to the river for sunrise when it was empty. Obviously, I never took a tripod with me and some days I wouldn't even take an image. But on the odd occasion, if the conditions were right and the image presented itself, I'd fire off a few and held shots before moving on again. Even though I'm back at work now, I've still managed to grab a few shots here and there. I work in one of the Cambridge colleges. It's got beautiful grounds. The college holds around 800 staff and students. As it currently stands, there's only around 50 people occupying the entire college complex. It seems surreal see such a fantastic building that's normally filled with so much life and energy look eerily quiet. If you've been kind enough to watch my last three videos, you'll know that I've been enjoying my time recently just photographing songbirds in the back garden. I've set up fake logs, fake perches, and I've photographed the birds from an old fishing village also capture them from a low vantage point. The apple blossom is well past its peak now, and so I'm looking for some alternative perches or compositions. We all seek inspiration from our peers, and over the last few weeks I've seen some images on social media from other photographers who use props for the birds to land. So this week I think I'll give it a go myself. I wanted to take full advantage of the weekend, and so I thought I'd set the first prop up on the Friday evening. This will give the birds a few hours to get used to it before I come out and sunrise tomorrow. I didn't have anything particular in mind, so it was just a case of scouting the garden. I thought the old sundial would be a good start, and I wanted to set it up next to the fake clock. That way, the birds could flip from one to the other. Plus, they would use the feeding from the log. I thought the sundial looked quite nice, but it was too low to the ground. I needed it to be higher in order to take full advantage of the bushes in the background. We have a concrete plant pot near the house, and I thought this would be a good base to sit the sundial on, but it's heavy, really heavy. I wouldn't advise anyone to try and move such a heavy object on their own, but it's okay for me, because I'm a professional. I also discovered that flip-flops don't flip or flop very well when going backwards, but as I now had the momentum, I wasn't going to stop. The sundial did look a little wonky, which I suppose doesn't really matter. I thought I'd straighten it the best I could, and just hope it didn't fall over. Overnight. 
time now to just sprinkle some mealworms on the surface and let the birds feed on them during the evening. Usually, I would have grabbed the camera and a few beers and just sat in the hide for a few minutes. Friday nights are when me and the guys record the photography club night. So it was time to get set up for that and then head down to the garden in the morning. The weather on the Saturday started off cold yet sunny, but the best light comes between 3.30 and 6pm. This is when the sun is behind the hive. As the full colors would change as the day progressed, I thought I'd take advantage of the sunlight while I had it. Not only that, but as the day was about practicing with props, I wanted to see what worked and what didn't, and so the position of the sun my second fiddle to the composition. So I started shooting earlier than I normally would. I removed the other bird feeders as I didn't want them to compete with the food that I placed on the sundial. I did, however, place some food on the log as the birds were used to feeding from that. And now it was just a short jump onto the dial. Okay. The activity on the prop wasn't great, so after 30 minutes or so, I decided to cut off the food supply on the log by simply covering it with a banana skin that was in the hide. I should add that there's nothing special about the banana skin, but it was either that or an empty packet of pickled onion monster munch. Sundial definitely made a good prop for the smaller birds, such as the robin or the blue tits, especially if they held onto the tail itself. I wasn't so keen when the jackdaw landed on him, as he looked more like an executioner waiting for his first victim, rather than a picture postcard photo. All in all, I think this prop will work. If I have some nice afternoon light and a good flow of small birds, I certainly won't hesitate. Next up were the terracotta plant pots that didn't hold any flowers. Each opening made for an excellent feeding bump. With their wide ribs, it gave the birds easy access to perch on. I placed the terracotta pot on top of the sundial's pedestal, which was still precariously balanced on top of the concrete planter. At this point, it did occur to me that after watching me cover the gazebo in black plastic, now trying to balance garden objects on top of one another, my neighbours may be thinking I'm having a breakdown. I framed up the pot and decided to start shooting in full frame rather than using the APS-C mode that's on my camera. I've been using APS-C, which is the equivalent to shooting on a crop sensor camera, a lot recently, as it uses a lot of storage on the SD card, and it writes the data to the card a lot quicker. As I didn't quite know where the birds would land and how each image would look, I decided to give myself plenty of wiggle room and stick to full frame. It didn't take long for the birds to arrive, and I was sure that this was going to be a good choice of prop, as there was so much activity. The light wasn't particularly great, so I thought I'd grab some video before turning the camera over to stills. And to be honest, it was really nice just watching the birds feed. Once I switched back over to stills, my initial optimism of obtaining a good composition started to fade. Even though the prop was a great feeding station, it was almost too busy to achieve a good clean shot. The multiple openings and small birds just seemed to blend into one another. Every shot that wasn't on the top rim just looked messy. The 
only way I could make this object work without having any flowers in it was by cropping everything out of the frame except the top rim. This worked quite nicely, and if I'd have had better light, I think I'd have been fairly happy with the results. I was just about to leave the hive to change props when this landed, a sparrow hole. I was sitting back in my chair when it landed, so I couldn't quite make out what it was at this point, as I'd never seen one in the back garden before. I also didn't want to lean forward too quickly and press my eye up to the EVF in case I scared it away. And so I slowly moved my hand up to the camera and just started shooting. After a quick burst of 20 or so front, I then pressed my eye slowly to the camera, refocused and fired off another 20 or so before it eventually just blew off. At this stage, I was so pleased with a photograph of my first bird of prey, and I immediately went inside and showed Helen the images on the back of the camera. And little did I know, in a few days' time, it would return again. Only this time, the images would be worthy of printing. Day was pushing on now, and the light was very intermittent. I searched the wood store for a branch that I could use vertically, but everything that I had looked far too polished. In other words, they had been pre-cut with a chainsaw, and the ends just looked far too smooth. I did take a few shots, but they just didn't sit right with me, so I didn't dwell on this prop for too long. Perhaps on my next long walk, I'll keep my eyes open for a more natural looking perch. With this in mind, I tried something a little different and slightly more contemporary. In the shed, I found a glass jar that Helen had made and decided to give this a go. I simply filled it up with some water to give it more stability and waited for the right light to hit it. With any photography, light was such an important factor. The landscape photographer was that bleaching that light could sometimes be. Subject of black light would have been too deep and not inspiring. No amount of processing would replicate good conditions. So, if possible, it's important to wait for the right light. Light light is really transforming. During the week, there were a few items from the garden. Traditional wooden spade hand always seems to work well in an image. So I tied it to the log and waited for the robin, or hopefully the mm -hmm. to, to land on it. I was the main feet of the log, taking no notice of the spade. So I took my eye off the camera for a few seconds and brought myself to coffee. When I looked back up, the arrow hole had returned. This is why I love the landscape photography. It's a slow form of photography where I can gain my composure and take my time before taking the shot. I can honestly say I never stood behind my camera in Snowdonia and had that gut-wrenching feeling that a mountain could fly off at any second. Quickly reaching for the camera and fumbling with the controls, I noticed that the hawk had back to me and was sitting in between the shovel, metal stand and the tree. And so the composition wasn't exactly great. Some light was also being broken up by the leaves on the trees, as though sometimes the light would hit the bird's face, and other times the bird's face would be in shade. I didn't hang around too long, but a few days after the shots were taken, I didn't manage to photograph it, and asked the light if this bird is now going to be a regular visitor to the back garden. At the time, I did manage to fire off around 50 images. Around with them. I had to try some different shots. But now, I'm happy to have you done. I think it's quite a Something else that I borrowed. A metal wall. 
between the two. It's the longest spout I've ever seen in my life. The trick here was to get the birds to see them. But if you keep them away, place the food so it would have been visible. Then I had a light bulb for it. Simply filled up the water you can with water, and then place a small Tupperware container inside the water you can to fill it up with water. All I had to do was make sure that the water level sat at the correct height. This way, the top of the container would be below the rim of the watering can. This thing worked well. Once the robin knew where the feed was, he was happy to feed by a Or rather, he did. Once the blackbirds arrived, they pushed him off and they hopped the food. I do think this particular water is a but works really well and I'll be the best in the small one at some point in the future. Yet effective part of this the food and the size of the pots. The size of the pots work well for the size of the lobby. As always, this week has been fun. And I've learned a little about which plots work and which plots don't. And so hopefully over the next few weeks I'll find myself a nice and natural looking the garden. Maybe a rugged pad that really suits that sparrow hole, which I'm really hoping it turns. Maybe a few more terracotta pots for still the water. Plenty of boots made of this. That was the list of members. In regards to my hive, I'm probably going to dismantle it soon. But this doesn't mean it's going to be the end of my backyard photography. In fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. The thing is, I'm going to set up another one. One that's a little bit more comfortable for me, and something that's more easy to I'll explain about that on another video. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and tapping that small notification bell for future videos. Also, give it a like and please leave me a comment. Until my next video, be kind and stay safe. Okay, that ends it for props. You can see how using different props elevates your photos. Any questions? No? Well, I hope it gave you some ideas. You did. Okay. What time is it? 817. I have um, another part that doesn't have anything to do with props, but has to do with your tips and tricks. We can see that. Or not. It's up to you. Sure. Go for it. Okay. Go right ahead. All right. Let me get here. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right. I'm going to get out of. When we do tips and trips, Dennis did a great one last time on his vacation with beautiful photos. You can use your tips and tricks also for different events going on. Whether it be a birthday party, any type of party, any kind of event that is taking place, you can use, um, put it together to tell a story. This is what my tips and tricks looks like. Keep in mind, the photographs are all mine, but they are, a lot of them are not edited. Uh, look, nah, not what I would show in any gallery, but under the circumstances, it was me journaling what happened. We had in 2008, we had a hurricane called 
Ike. It was a Category 2, and keep that in mind, Category 2. It almost made a Category 3 when it uh, hit landfall. It came in as a Category 4 in the Gulf. It had a Category 5 storm surge, which was 22 feet tall. Now, when it was coming in, and I'm just going to add this little tidbit in here in case somebody is in the same situation we were in. When it came in, I was ready to leave that morning. In fact, I did leave that morning, and I told Billy, come on, let's go. You get the truck, I'll get the car, let's get out of here. But he went ahead and decided to stay and board up some windows. As you can see through here, I said, we have insurance, don't worry about windows, don't worry about anything, let's get out of here before everybody else decides to leave. He did not. Uh, we went to Giddings, which is only 160 miles away. It was his mom's house um, that nobody was living in. And I made it in oh, about two hours and 20 minutes. It's normally a 2.45 to three-hour trip. <laughs> well, y'all know how I drive. So I made it in about two hours and 20 minutes, two hours and 30 minutes at the most. Then I waited for Billy, and I waited for Billy, and I waited for Billy. I had already told Terry, my other kid, get out of there now. And she said no. Her next-door neighbor said that they don't need to leave until later on. I said, he's wrong. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. She stayed. Her husband stayed. So I grabbed one of the grandkids who wanted to come with me, and we took off. Ashley and I got there in no time at all. That morning... We waited and waited and waited for them. We finally went to bed that night. They have not shown up. But what we did do was stop at a store on the way in Giddings, went in, got some food for them. We came back out, and it was bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic going about five miles an hour, which meant all the way back to Galveston, 160 miles, was nothing but bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And those people who did not get out in the morning were stuck in that traffic. Billy shows up after we went to sleep. Fine, go to bed. I'm tired. Harry, not so lucky. Their car broke down. Transmission went out. Billy had to go all the way back and come back. And they showed up the next morning. Get out early. When I came back into town... This is our land, and we have two acres, so the whole place looked like this. The fence was torn down. Uh, we had roofing miss. A lot of the roof was missing. Our shingles on the roof, as I can say. We, uh, lots of limbs, lots of limbs. And we were the lucky ones. I was called to come in and take pictures for the insurance companies. So we headed to the island. Now, I live on the mainland. You have to go across this causeway, long bridge, to get to the island. Before we get to the island, this is what your seawall looks like. It's 20 feet high, protecting the island. This is the beginning of Ike coming to shore. As I said, it was a 22-foot seawall. This is just the beginning. You can see how the waves were in the back. This is what I came across. Large boats right through the house and up on near the street. Others, this is still on the causeway, but is that we're coming down off of the causeway. You can see all of the boats down through here. This here is a blockage on the causeway, preventing them from coming over. They may have went over for all I know because all of the roads, none of the roads were clear. 
we had to wait until they cleared enough roads for us to get in. This, to me, tore me apart because the only living vegetation was stuff like the palm trees. Everything else was dead, except for St. Augustine grass, which eh, you can't kill it. But you can see all the dead vegetation except for the palm trees in the back. And the weeds. Even the trees, the tall trees, you can see. You saw stuff like this. This is what happened. It all piled up into piles as that storm surge came in. A lot of these are taken from the car as we're going to our assignments. This, I believe, is at least a 10 foot, I know it's at least 10 foot, if not taller, um, fencing. You see where the water line is? So you can imagine the houses and how deep that was. This is what people went through. And by the way, if you had your electricity off for a week or two, like they did here, and they finally were able to get back in to clean it up, you do not want to ever open up that refrigerator or freezer. It is the worst smell on earth, all of that rotting food. And that's exactly what you smelled. I'm not going to show you any of the inside pictures of uh, that I had to take for the insurance. But I will show you outside of some of the places that all of this is just no good anymore. House after house after house. And a house. This is twice as long. You can get an idea of how tall it was. They were picking them up with the dump trucks and taking them over here, all of those furniture, appliances, everything, and dumping them. We didn't only have to worry about tornadoes, high winds, and storm surge, but you also had to worry about fires. And there were a lot of homes that burned down. I'm just hoping that the people that lived in these homes were not foolish enough to have stayed on the island. Unfortunately, there were some that were foolish enough and lives were lost because of it. Another burnt down home and look at the car. It was picked up, taken over here on top of stuff and everything went on fire, got on fire. Once again, another one. And this is another. Look at the boat. It doesn't belong there, it belongs in the uh, bay, uh, over there in the uh, ocean. But it was brought up in on top of the home and everything caught on fire. Keep in mind, this is a cat two, a cat two, not a three, four or five, a cat two. They would not let them in the homes for the longest time. In fact, when I went there, they had uh, one part of the island, uh, southern part of the island, it was uh, totally blocked off. Nobody could go in there. Absolutely no insurance people, no one could go in. There. But in this portion, we were able to get in there after a little bit of time, after they cleared some of the up. But people wanted back in. Of course, we're in Texas, so you have owner with gun. I found this quite humorous. Yes, we're open. Actually, it's not the surf and skate that was open, but over here in front of all of this here that they shove off to the side was a convenience store. But there was a little bit of humor in that. These are the rocks that went, were down on the bottom of the uh, seawall, which was 20 feet down. We lost a lot of peers. 
how this got up here, I do not know. But over here on the side, this is a walkway. And the road is way over here on the side. But somehow or another, the truck was up and over that building. I do not know how it happened. You couldn't flush. You had to use the porta pots. Oh, my goodness, the rattlesnakes. They were not only on the island, but they were also in Galveston County on the other side. But they came out in droves. A lot of lootering going on. This guy had a 38 special. And the sad part of all of it is the cow, lots of dead cattle. We also had other animals that have been swept out to sea. On the way home, and this is not on the island, but this is on the mainland. You can see how deep even the mainland was. It was really quite deep. And I lived on the main, but that's how how deep it was from the uh, paddle surge. This, I didn't take, of course, but this is Port Volivar. It was all homes and businesses, restaurants, and really a nice place that we, you know, took a ferry to go visit. One house stood, the rest of it was gone, totally wiped out. The whole town was wiped out. Category two, Now, this is a seawall, and this was one of the saddest things for me, um, besides all the other. But, Brian, you may not recognize it, but this wall here, I mean, this road here is where we went to watch those hand gliders. It's right through here. This did not look like that then, because they have built up since the, uh, the uh, hurricane. But this is a Texas City dike. It is actually the longest man-made fishing pier in the world. It's about five and a half miles long. All kinds of restaurants, bait camps, and et cetera, were all through here. This is what was left, nothing. Sad part is a lot of feral cats was on here. There is no way they were able to get off of that pier. And so what would they do? They went up underneath the businesses. And of course, all of these cats were out to sea, drowned, which just broke my heart. There were good things about it. I took my G kids. I would never have left any of my animals or my G kids um, there. I would not have put them through any of that danger. And uh, here they are. We're in Dallas, having fun. I took, and yes, this is kilted, but I took him to see the uh, Longhorn cattle and the cattle drive. And that's in Fort Worth. And then to end it off, I wanted to make sure they all had a great time. All right, that's it. That's great. But I do want to say, Tell a story with your photos. They don't have to be top perfect photos. It just tells a story on what happened. Okay, I'm handing it back to you guys. I'm going to quit sharing. I think I am. Stop share. <laughs> you did a good job, Margie. Oh, thank you. Oh, Margie, thank you. Very good. Yes. Well, I'm hoping more of you can get into the tips and tricks. Like I said, it could be something like that. It could be something like Dennis had. Uh, it could be a video. It can be showing us how you had processed that film. Anything to do with photography. And I only have a handful of you that will do tips and tricks. And I need more of you out there doing it. Okay. All right. And I think we have a couple months open. Yes, we do. At the end of the, we have 
December open. November and December. No, because uh, Bob Jesus, I think, it's a question mark afterward because he said he thought he would take November. Oh, okay. I need to but read. I haven't seen Bob in a while, so it may be open for all I know. I'll, I'll take December. Who was that? Brian. Oh, okay. Brian, you got December. I, I mean, unless someone else has something they want to do, but if not, I got it. I'll get you. Thank you. But I want to see more and more people get out there. Their pictures don't have to be gallery, you know, uh, photo looking, whatever you want to say. Just do something. Do something. Well, I have a uh, family photograph that uh, Annie gave me to fix for her. It was broken in a couple pieces. And uh, I think I was uh, on record for uh, showing some yeah. of the steps on how I fixed that. Um, I had it ready last time, but I've changed things around, so I don't have it. I, don't, I can't do it with any state of grace right isn't now. It, but but keep me, you know, keep me on file. That's swig. Yeah, that's, that's a swig, swig at the end of the oh, month. So you Thursday. And Beth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, You're ahead of schedule. Okay. Yeah, I haven't even started working on mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that would be for uh, yeah the twenty seventh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I'm ahead of the game, and I didn't even know it. Okay. There you go. All right. All right. It doesn't have to be that long either. It can be just a couple of minutes long. I don't care. Just as long as more of you will commit to doing some kind of tip, yeah. anything with photography, a book. Oh. If you found a book you really like on photography, my goodness, tell us about it. I don't care. Uh, when you were showing that uh, first part of the, uh, the close-ups and, and uh, how, oh. how uh, things were being set up to... Uh, make them look different or natural. Um, this is nowhere near that category, but what I did is I have a uh, chess set that uh, it's about the king and the queen are about five and six inches high, ivory. And I photographed it as part of a depth of field test. And it's in black and white. And I'm showing you the prints. I have the, I have the uh, actual images, but I can't get to those. So I can show you this. Now the first one is, uh, and it's very difficult to see, but I'll, I'll show it to you the best that I can here. Uh, that was the. Uh, oh, nice. The, the, the queen is really the sharp part, and uh, I don't know if my voice is kicking the picture into being a full-size screen, but um, that's the first part. And then the other one was uh, making the aperture smaller so that, um, I'm trying to get the light out. Uh, all right, boy, this is weird. But then there was uh, front to back sharpness for the chest set. So anyway, when you were showing the uh, earlier part Oops. of the how-tos, that made me think of that. And I, I couldn't get the uh, digital image, but these were printouts, which is rare for me to have prints like this. Nowadays it is. I've got them all over the walls back here. But um, so anyway, that was uh, one example of a uh, setup that I had done here. Oh, that's another thing I can show. Um, I took pictures of the setup to do that. So uh, at another time, I'll be able to show that. Great, great. Okay. Props are great. I, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I really I put, like props. Where I put my lights, where the tripod was, where the camera was, what lens it was, what yeah. the background was, et cetera. Love to see that. Okay. Since we're since we're still talking about the uh, props there, I'm going to share my screen. I want to show you guys a, a guy that I follow on Facebook. 
Well, um, Rex, you have tips and tricks next at the end of the month as well as your um fixing the pitcher. So maybe you could share your props then too. Okay, that's what I'll make it. Good. I'll share. It Thank you, Rex. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys see? Uh, oh yeah, cars? he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so if you don't follow him on Facebook, uh, check him out. His name is Anthony Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-D-T. Um, but anyhow, uh, Margie, you were talking about the kid with the, or you were talking about the, you showed a video with the guy with the small cars. This guy does, this this young kid, he's, um, I believe, autistic, if I'm correct, uh, Marty? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's autistic, but he does these photos with a cell phone, uh, with an iPhone. So if you see his setup, he's got cars, lines drawn on the, on the board and everything. And uh, there's one of his pictures. So that's the setup. You can see it, the cars, there's the diner, everything in the background. Yeah. That's amazing. Real. Yeah. It's real. He's quite good. I've seen him before. Oh, yeah. He's he's really good. Um Here's another one. I this one here I kind of I really kind of like. So he's got his car set up, the diner in the background. And yeah, wow. You know what's interesting is he's got the color balance correct all the way through. Yeah. Yep. And there's just a Me few too. more of, of this this setup that he did, but really good uh as far as perspective using small models in big buildings and doing some really cool stuff. I think I've seen some of his work too, which I was just floored on. I mean, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Yep. Wow. Props. That's what it's about. You know, you can't get bored if you use props. No, well, anyhow, I, would, I just thought I'd bring that up since you, you uh, love it. That. Um, Absolutely love it. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. I've been following him for I don't know a year or so now. He's got his he got a book out with all his with a bunch of pictures in it. Um, he builds, or I don't know if he builds them. He has a lot of, of small, um, to scale buildings as well and he puts the cars in it and then photographs them makes it look like a real car uh a full-size car so where's where's he at he is uh where's he located at uh, it doesn't say i think he's out uh out west but i don't see it on his facebook page as to where he's located at but anthony schmidt uh s-c-h-m-i-d-t uh, photography on Facebook. And, oh, he's in Washington, Washington, oh, okay. Washington State. All right. Um, and he does have his. He does have a uh, uh, website as well. And like I said he's he's presented some books. He sells books, and uh, he fools around. He, he does a lot of a lot of stuff. Like I said, I've been watching. I've been following him for a couple of years now. I think. And he's pretty good. Yeah, I think it started off with um, he borrowed his mother's cell phone. They were somewhere and he went out and did like a matchbox car or something. And that's how it started. He came in and said, look, this looks real. <laughs> yeah. And he um, he has all these models he, and, and people donate him the models so he can take pictures. Oh, I know. He's got he has thousands of these models now which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, check him out on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, uh, look him up and, and take a look at him, give him a follow and uh, watch what he does. Cause he does all kinds of stuff, stuff with airplanes and uh, cars and trucks and uh, all kind of, all kind of cool stuff with models and perspective. So it's a, it's pretty neat to look at and, and see what he, what he comes up with. There's another gentleman on Facebook. Um, I can't even pronounce his name, but he's behind this. It's on behind the scenes photography, 
and he makes um like he uses miniatures and stuff um let me see if i can pull it up over here let me just google his name and maybe it'll come up. but he's he's pretty cool too and he makes all his models In. 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 Well, Archie's yelling at the dogs. <laughs> Boy. Well, well, well. All right. I'll keep looking for him. All right. Well, anyhow, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. We only got a, we only got about fifteen more minutes. I don't know if we're going to get into. A, we want to critique anything, or anybody yeah. have anything they want to bring up, or. No. I just hope people get out there and try some of these different props. Um, and, uh, especially with it raining like this, the umbrellas, you know. Uh, the other thing, uh, oh, I did want to mention that Thursday night is the um, Lightroom class at IHOP, 7 o'clock. Uh, I had to move it because I was uh, out of town last week. Uh, I am going to be out of town the next two days, and I'll be back Thursday, and I'll be at the uh, at IHOP on Thursday night for the, I, for the uh, Lightroom class. And then uh, starting, then we'll finish up Lightroom, and then starting next month we'll do we'll we'll be working with uh, Photoshop. Then, uh, I, I have them if you want to see. Yeah, yeah sure. What? All right, let's see. Share screen. Mm -hmm. All right, can you see it? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's what you sent me. I love this. Yeah. So he makes up all these um, scenes. Um, the first one with the fishermen, um, he made the boat, and the water is cellophane. And then he just did the lighting. Um, same. So these are, you said these are miniatures? They are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you get in there to show them how he did that boat, just to give them an idea? Well, this is this is on Instagram, so okay. I don't think it's in, don't have he's it. on Facebook. Um, here you can see that he is. Oh, let's see if I can. No, nope, it's not gonna let me do it. Okay, so um, like he makes up these rooms here. Um, so it's kind of like um. One of those little dollhouse. Yeah, yeah, it's like a dollhouse, but it's like those shoebox things that we used to make in school. <laughs> I forget what they're called. Dioramas. Dioramas. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so it's basically what they are. You can see his on that one. If you come down a little bit, you can see him with his tweezers right, right there. So you can see how small some of this stuff is. Here with the astronaut here. Um, I just thought it was kind of cool because it reminded me of Anthony. But um, yeah, he did the duca the decayed room? But you could, see, and I thought it was a real place. And then I saw this one with his, like it explained it on the other. But that, that that is a lot of attention to detail. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Way more attention than I have. Attention, I don't have an attention span that long. So okay, so here's this here, and then you can see his little setup right there. And a lot of it's like just tabletop. Oh, go away. Go away. You can only look at so many Instagram pictures oh, to get you out. Oh, well. Mm. Anyways, check them out. Oh, there. We'll hurry. 
<laughs> Maybe they won't count. But you can see, yeah, see, a small little. It's amazing what some of these photographers can do, how creative they are. So anyways, I just thought, that, you know, since we looked at Anthony, I thought this was cool. Yeah, definitely. Those are interesting. Yeah, they are. And, and you know, guys, uh, pretty much most of the year, most most of the year, you can go down to uh, Phipps Conservatory and the one room, they have a whole bunch of miniature stuff in the train with the trains. Right. This is while you're there, just taking some pictures uh, with, you know, with stuff that's already set up. You don't have to uh, be a amazing artist to build something like this. Yeah. part, We take pictures. Yeah. So anyway, stop share. Pretty cool. I agree. All right, where's my stop share thing, friends? Maybe you can put that in the link. Oh. Okay. That's okay. Well, that's his name right there. Oh, you can't see it now because I stopped share. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, if you got. Um, I'll put uh, it in chat. Okay. <laughs> in chat and Margie, if you can uh, text me or not text me, but email me over a list of your videos that you showed. No, we are. Because uh, when I post the, the YouTube video of our meeting, I have to put in the information of that or they yell at me for posting other people's yes. videos. Yes. They still yell at me, but at least I have the links in there saying that we, we copied them. Yep. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. Uh, All right. His name's in the chat. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um if well, the train room in the Carnegie Science Center is another one too, up there on the third or fourth floor. Oh yeah. There's Lydia, there's a whole room there. There's opportunities to keep you there all day. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to uh maybe we have to look into scheduling a, a walk up there sometime. Hmm. We haven't wow. been to the science center in a long time. Wait, I can go to Facebook. Hold on. All right. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to talk about? We got a couple more minutes. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to go get some sleep. I got a six and a half hour drive in the morning. No. Coming back the same night. No, I get. Uh, I'm driving up tomorrow. Uh, me and one of the guys from here at work, and we're spending the night, and then we have training all day tomorrow, starting at like seven in the morning till almost five o'clock, and then I'm driving home. So yeah, I took a six and a half hour drive up and back in the same day, and I'll tell you what, ain't going to happen again. Yeah, I've 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 done that many times. I don't like to do that no more. So. I'm too damn old for that. Um, I did just go uh, last week where I was at was I was in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I had an opportunity to go out to the Good Guys Car Show. Uh, I have never seen that many hot rods of high caliber hot rods at one place <laughs> in my life. Uh, my next door neighbor was there. I walked six miles, according to my <laughs> Apple Watch. Oh, Wow. Um, and I would be willing to bet that I didn't make it to three quarters of the car. I, I, that I only seen about three quarters of the cars. Um, yeah. There's a couple parking lots I never even made to. Uh, I'm in, like I said, high end, high quality cars, not just run of the mill cars that you see at the car shows around here. I mean, this stuff was, you know, two and three hundred thousand dollar street rods. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Some of the some know, nicest stuff I've ever seen. Let me know when you want to go the next time, and I'll even drive. Hell. Well, I I intend on going uh, going next year, but when I go next year, it's not going to be a one day. I'm going to go for several days. It's a three day event. I think I'm going to go for all three days next year. <laughs> um, okay. Keep me in touch if you don't if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way to there's no way to look at it all, and I'm sure that because a lot of them left on the day we were, I was there Friday, uh, a lot of them left on Friday, and I'm sure there was new ones there Saturday and new ones there Sunday. So, 
Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I, I, it's, it's hard to explain how many cars was there. It really is. But All right. I found him on Facebook and it does have like that picture of the, um, fish boat and then how his setup. So if you want to see it, I can show you. Uh, yeah, if you want, I can do it quick. So. Good. Yeah. We've got a couple more minutes and then throw a link to his Facebook page in our, in the chat as well. Okay. Uh, I had uh, one business question for uh, you, Brian. Whoops. Oh, what happened? happened? Yeah, <laughs> you can ask. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that you've connected with uh, Jim Black for delivering his uh, links for the different get-togethers. Yeah, he's on the he's on the list. That's how he got the link for tonight's meeting. Okay. Yep. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I sent him one as a backup, but uh, oh, did you? I okay. thought that you would get it. Yeah, Jim, if you didn't if you didn't get it from my email, just keep in check in your email. You should have got it from I'll check it. Yeah, we I, it comes from Constant Contact is the name of the company. Okay. So sometimes, sometimes it'll pop that into like a junk file or spam file, but yeah, you're on the you're on the list. I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Okay, sir. Did you get an update, a Sunday update at about 8.05 yesterday morning? He wouldn't have. I added him on today. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get him fixed up. Yep. Yeah, you should, okay. from here on out, you should be getting stuff, Jim. All right. So he's using a Sony. Um, this is the picture we looked at. This is his setup. So just saran wrap for the water. One, well, two lights, it looks like. Wow. Mm -hmm. So pretty simple. Well, other than him making the stuff. <laughs> yeah, they had his camera on there, too, and his lens. Uh, right. Sony yeah. A7 with a Sigma 105. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Art so, macro. So this is the deer scene. Mm -hmm. Another deer scene, the silhouette one, it, the elephants. He just used um smoke or incense or whatever to make the fog. You know that one there actually wouldn't be that difficult because you could buy the little elephant uh, toys. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we're not having we're not having to build a whole movie. No, store. no, you don't have to. <laughs> so maybe like we that. could do this like for our. Yeah. Of course, this is one that he's built. Patient or something. Yeah, I'm. I I, I don't think we have. To, none of us have the patience to build that. I don't think. Yeah, and that's his <laughs> other room. You can those see those are amazing though. Right here. Yeah, we did the glass of water with ice in it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I just thought you'd like to see, like, he does have his setup on here. There's the astronaut. Yeah, there's there's several of those that, you know, that look like they could probably not be that bad to have to, to be able to figure out how to do. Right. Yeah. So anyways, cool. check them out. Check them out. Just uh, copy and paste that uh, the link out of here, out of up there in your chat in the chat, so I can put it in the uh, yep YouTube video too. All right, that's it. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Very good meeting. I appreciate y'all uh, hanging out with us tonight and participating and everything. All right. Um, yeah. Some of you are so quiet. I've been waiting for Rob. I want to hear Rob all night. Oh, no, quiet, no, man. No. I, just, I was taking notes. <laughs> he, he talks so little, it makes me feel like I talk too much. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's, oh, there's, there's nice. another <laughs> Somebody's cuckoo. Yep, we can use we can start using it as our official end of the meeting. Uh, <laughs> I I turn my Basically. time clock off. <laughs> I mean, I mute myself when it goes off. All right, guys. Well, hey, again, I appreciate everybody. Um, 
I will to probably to I don't know if I'll do it tonight because I said I got to get up and go in the morning, but probably tomorrow night when I'm in the motel, I'll put up the uh, uh, flare for the uh, calendar and get that up so you guys can post some pictures there and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you. If anybody's coming to the meeting uh, to, or Thursday night, I'll see you there. Otherwise, we'll see you whatever's next. I can't think of what it is right offhand. So. Well, if it's at the next meeting that you need all of the pictures, uh, should we uh, shoot out an email to the rest of the club members and let them know about uh, the calendar? Yes, we can. Uh, I'll get with... Um, yeah. yeah, I'll put it out. Add it to the Sunday update. Yeah, add it to the Sunday update, and I'll put it. I'll put an email out uh, just to everybody to to say what we're doing and what the idea is. Uh, Swig meeting or the W next WPS meeting. Next WPS meeting. So you got a month from today. Okay. And then we'll and then we'll start the voting process. So you can that gives you time to look through your pictures and pick out what you want to put in and that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. I'm going to uh, go home. I'm still at work. Okay. Good night, good night all. All right. Good night. Good night, good night, all. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. We'll see y'all. See you, Jim. Bye bye. 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 Stay out of trouble, Rex. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is me?